Now let's say you want to enhance your image with masks, create more depth in it, because you can see all values here are equally spread over the image. It obviously looks great, but we can make it look much better. Now we're going to use the window tab in DaVinci Resolve to create some masks and create a certain look. Now I like to do this in parallel nodes to the exposure node. This will make sure all the exposures don't parallel to each other and won't intervene with each other. So we're gonna just going to make one mask here and we're going to start with a simple oval. I'm going to feather it out a bit and I'm going to make it in such a shape to kind of give a little vignette to the image. I'm going to feather it out and we're going to slightly pull down the shadows and you'll see it's FX the inside of the mask. Now to change that you go into the masks and you'll see this little button here. You press it and it inverts your mask. Now you can play around with all the settings here with the size of it, the pan, the tilt, but I can just do the same here in the window if you select power window. So we're gonna put it over myself here. I'm gonna feather it out greatly and then you'll see the before and after we deselect that before after adds a lot of impact to it now we're gonna add another parallel node you can name them to be more organized but I'm not gonna do that right now I'm gonna add one on the highlights we're gonna feather it out greatly like a lot I'm gonna put it up there so it doesn't interfere with me I'm gonna go into the midtone boost it a little bit going here going to mist in the blur section we add a little bit of blur to the highlights, just a tiny touch. Not a lot, just to get a little bit of glow going right there. And now we can also see that that mask made a little bit of glow in the highlights right there, which looks very nice. And then we can do one more thing, which is adding, a, adding another parallel with a gradient mask, for example, to put a gradient from the floor that darkens the floor a little bit. So we can go into the shadows and darken down the floor just like that now we can select all of them and I'll show you the before and after so before the image looks like this and after all the adjustments it looks like this now this image has much more depth this way and if we look at the entire before and after it went from rec 709 to this which is such an impactful and contrast rich and deep image to look at and it looks great honestly now next to using power windows there are a few more ways you can mask now I'm now going to show you how to use the HSL mask. We're going to call one here HSL and we're going to add another note and add an outside note right here. I'm just going to call it outside for example, just to be organized. We're going to go into the tab with a little qualifier right here and there's the qualifier HSL. Make sure your qualifier is selected and then look for a certain color. Now I want my highlights to be very warm and my shadows to be a little bit more blue. So we're gonna go for our skin tones. We're gonna select them. You can press Shift H to uh, show your mask, as you can see. And we're gonna start refining it so it's mostly the skin tone that's selected. We're gonna feather it out and we're gonna start feathering it so till it's mostly the skin tones that are selected, as you can see. Just around there is about fine. We can always use a little bit of pre-filter or clean black and white to get it in the right position. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more precise you make the mask, the better it's gonna look like. You can play around with all these features to get it into the right look. But for me, but for me, it's roughly right like this. Now you click on the outside node. And you see that it affects anything but roughly the skin tones. Also some other stuff, but roughly the skin tones. Now to be more precise, you can always feather it out more. By feathering it out a little bit more, you get a little bit smoother transitions between the two. And you can also up the blur radius to make sure it does not look very weird when you adjust colors. Now it can go in here. And you can go in the offset, for example, and make it more blue. Now you'll see that that changed the image drastically. It turned it much more blue. So we're gonna slightly lower the effect. And now we're gonna look at the before and after of it. If we click off Shift H, it turns it off. It took the image from this to this, which if you look closely, creates a great deal of separation between me and the background. Although using HSL can create a lot of artifacts again, which means you get a lot of color noise in your image. So be careful with that. But that you can see that it creates a very strong contrasty teal and orange look in the image because we took it from this 
to this. This to this. You'll see the intricate details in the color changes between these two colors here. This blue was greenish as you can see here. And there's much more contrast between the two and it looks much epicer as you can see here. And that's how you, for example, can use the HSL masking to create more color contrast in your image. But you can use it in many different ways and be creative with it. Now there's one more mask that I didn't talk about, which we can add here. We'll call it MM for magic mask. And that's this section over here. Now a magic mask is basically an quote unquote AI driven feature that can allow you to mask out people as well. You can use it for people, but also for objects, for example. Let's say we want to mask, specifically, we want to mask this tree here. You draw a line on this tree. And now we can click Shift H to see the mask. And as you can see, it roughly selected a tree. It looks all right. You can redefine the mask a little bit to get it better, etc. But it's also a very powerful feature. And this way you can also adjust adjust individual objects. Let's say we want this tree to be a little bit brighter, but not the things around it, you see? We can up the brightness of the tree a little bit to make it stand out a bit more in the image. Now this tree stands out a little bit. Let's add another one, shall we? We add it in parallel to not adjust. So everything gets processed besides each other. Let's organize it nicely. And let's use this one on the person, for example, so me. We select the entire person, not features, where you can be, you know, very precise. I'm going to click person. I'm going to draw a line on me. And it should roughly start masking me out. You can press, press Shift H to show the mask. And you see, it's all right. It kind of knows how the person should look like. It's not great. And obviously, masking it out by hand is much more efficient. But as you can see, when you start to refine it a little bit, you can kind of get the mask in the right in the right place for you to adjust anything so we can also put up the midtones of the so we click shift h and we will start to adjust the person also a little bit we'll now see that also the person stands out a little bit more in the image so now with the magic mask we went from this to this which adds again a little bit more depth to the image and this is such a powerful way of masking out your subjects. Now I will show you all the masks before and after and you'll see how much impact we can have on an image. Now for magic mask, I need to tell you one more thing. There's one problem. We selected a person right here, right? But what happens if that person moves? You see, it's not selected anymore. And it doesn't even affect the person anymore, as you can see. So for that, you click on the mask at the point you were and you click this one. Track forward and backwards. Magic Mask will start tracking your image, it will take a while, and then you will have your mask tracked. Right now I'm doing the tree, and I'll just not show the person right now. And it also will realize that there's a person walking in front of the tree, and make sure it's not affected by it. So now let's stop it, because I think I've done enough. There we are. Now we can activate this mask real quick, just so you see. There we go. But there's a person. Oh! It realizes there's a person and it will actually exclude it from the mask. You see it flickers a little bit and that's all right, but it's pretty good. If we go back to here, we go to the person, do the tracking again. You'll see it's a little bit less accurate and I do not like doing this with small people in the shot, but if there's a big person, it actually looks really good. But you can always stop it and manually adjust where it moves this little point to as you can see. And now it will make sure it's there in the tracking point. It's very easy. Now this is the before, just color correction and a lot that has already has a stylized look. And then this is with all the masking we did. You can see how much more punch and depth there is to the image. Obviously this is a very stylized look and very personal, but I like it. And now you know how to use the masks in the Finch Resolve. So I want to quickly apologize again for my microphone dying in the latter half of the video. Now you should have enough knowledge to color grade your first project in DaVinci Resolve. I didn't go very deeply into each subject, but as I said, it should be enough information for you to get started. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or corrections on what I've ta taught people here. See you all next week. Take care. As you can imagine, making these kinds of videos takes a lot of time.
You don't have to, but if you want to, you can donate one, five, ten, or any amount of money to keep these kinds of videos free in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much and enjoy the tutorial.